California state government just robbed me of $43,302.11. So two things were finally hitting this. And then we've got s'mores and what is it? Banana boats that are Hershey's banana. For some reason people's trash from next door. It's like their trash can opens up and then we get all their trash in the backyard. I don't get it. You put it over the fire. It doesn't have to touch the fire. You hold it like this. Come here. Closer. All right. It's just fire. Somebody come get your demon child. All right, kids, come on. Let's go wash our hands. And then done. Hey. We're gonna watch Power Rangers tomorrow, because tonight is bread time. No, Power Rangers are not time. It's a night time, which is right time to fight crime. Summertime. Tuesday morning at 9.15, I got 15 minutes to get to the courthouse. I'm just like, everything is slow moving today. And then I got a ticket to fight. But they gave me the data the day before. Basically no way to read it on a DVD. So we'll see how this goes. Obtain the addresses the dumbest location. trying to call you Order customer supply. This is Michael, can I have your first name, love me? Christopher Love. I got a couple. I'm having an issue uh, currently with a delivery driver that's coming before opening, um, and yet he's got the information to, of what to do if he comes before opening. I'm, I'm just wondering why the guy's not following the direction. I feel like it's intentional. And he's personally been here, and both him and his replacement have also gotten the same notice that they can leave packages in front of the door they could deliver them to the business behind the business which is also my home or to any of the residents around here and still for some reason every time i get a package from this guy he's here 15 minutes before opening leaves me the sticky note and then it'll be three days before I get my damn package. So I feel like I need to stalk him like a deer at this point. CJ was with me. Remember talking to the UPS guy? The package guy? The big box guy? A happy big box guy. Yeah, what did we tell him? Because we told him we were the guys. Yeah, to put it out front. That's right. Even my two-year-old remembers. High five, buddy. So I figured I'd create something. Got pretty annoying that my kids would always use my soap. Check this out. So I've loaded a couple of blocks with indents that say mom only and also ones that say kid only and dad only. Put them into tubes at the right measurements and then I will encase these in silicone and make soap from there. It's gonna get real interesting. Let's see if these sell. I would really like to know why prints do this. So I've got a bamboo P1P and a X1 carbon you're gonna see in a second. Why do I get curling on just one side of the bed, one part? It's all level, but just this one part. So for some reason, it curls and deforms whatever part. So I always print multiples of whatever I need. So that way this doesn't happen because it's always one part. So these are gonna be soap molds. And on the top it'll say, dad only. Hug. You just want a hug? Huh? You yeah, sure? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. It's one of those moments where you hug and then you just turn around and pow! I Power Ranger and you Ninja? Yep. So now we're dealing with the lady upstairs that flooded the two shops. Um, so I fixed his heat press, replaced the unit, the heater element, and the bottom panel, along with a couple of cables. Everything was available from the manufacturer, but parts were almost a thousand bucks. Then he got taxed on the parts, about fifteen hundred bucks for a two thousand dollar heat press. He said, "Order it." I ordered it, put my money out. Great. I'm supposed to go to her for payment. Tell me why she doesn't want to pay all of a sudden. Hmm. Sunny sun. It's gonna be an interesting day. It's the most interesting week of my life. But yeah, so that's done. And now I'm just waiting on her to get her head out of her ass because if she pays me and does it out of kindness for heart, then she's not liable for the damage and loss. It's more like, okay, hey, I, I did as fast as I could, I fixed it. Technically, from his standpoint, if he pays me, he could sue her plus damages, plus loss, plus cost. 
and I would recommend it. Just saying. This little guy trying to steal my watch and put it in his bat cave. What are you doing? I'm Batman. It's Batman. Oh no! Behind you, Batman! Ah. Okay, so the other night we were talking about what I was printing. We're gonna start from the beginning here. I was printing blocks that said dad only, right? Tell me why my bed temperature was far too high and it, it warped. Then tell me why I was too dumb not to put supports and faced it upward. So unfortunately, the writing is way off. So that's not gonna work when I go to silicone mold it because we want those indents to be there so that it has a male perspective into the soap so that there is a hollow point in the soap to allow for the writing to be read. A lot of people have presses that they press into the soap. This one isn't as bad, but uh, there's still, you'll see all the defects. Yeah, I decided, you know, let's try it again. That's only about three to five dollars worth of filament. It's very thick, so you know what I'll do? I'll hollow it out. So I did just that. Set both machines so that I could have one that says mom only and one that says dad only, or one that says kids only. Let's start with the kids only, because, you know, that's, we love our kids. So I hollowed it out, as you can see, and then printed it. I got a few that I could probably use. If I cut these down with a table saw or break them off, but as you can see, they're not so great. So then that was a fail. It also had a very weird layer shift right down next to the top. I think it's because of the gap in the print. So I decided, okay, you know, I'll try again because I had these printing. This layer shifted way the f out. I don't know why. Super far and just extra filament everywhere, single lines, really weird. And uh, you can see through it, which is not good because that's not watertight. So I decided both of those were scrapped. That's another like three, four dollars worth of filament. I'm gonna cut it down. We'll make it the width of three quarters, you know? And then we'll print the dad only one. And you know what? I'll try the ironing setting because that looks like it's really cool. People love it. The ironing setting is fantastic on the bamboo. Tell me why it skipped another line. I let it print all the way through because I was like, it's fucked up anyway. I wanna see what it does. And then it skipped another line on the other one. I don't know how. So then it, it made even a wider gap. Police in Oklahoma? What? Ambulance? Police car? Fire truck. Somebody's dead. Somebody's overdosed. Somebody's getting arrested. Okay. These ones are much cooler with the ironing, but also... What the fuck? What? Come on, Bamboo. This is two separate machines, so I know it's my software's fault, which is also Bamboo Studio. But come on. It should have detected these problems and then stopped it. But it didn't. All of these now go in here. This time what I'm going to do is flip the script. We're going to have a male side. I will cast and make a mold that has a female side and then cast that to make my true box mold. I'm just going to use a lot more silicone this way, but I think it's worth it. What I have to do here, and it may seem weird to put glue into a machine you paid thousands of dollars for. Trust me, I find it odd as well. But this promotes adhesion so you don't get curled lines, etc. I'm really hoping that that 0.08 thickness issue is why all of those were messed up. That would make so much sense. So personally right now, I would say I feel like there's a guy named Zach, you've seen him in the videos. We had a, uh, a job, a custom job for a customer and he was supposed to go out and quote it and give me all the information so I could order the wood. We had an agreement that this was gonna be the first of many jobs and then I would give him a profit share from the business so that he could feel like he has some equity. Me putting up the, the mechanics, the money, the design, all of it, and he just has to be here to do the work. That's a free business for him, for almost 40%. And that's pre-gross. So apparently that wasn't good enough, and he still hasn't even gotten paid from the first job, and he wants me to do the work. I've waited 11 days for him to get off his ass and just come do anything, anything. He's just a person who makes too many excuses, then has a, oh, well, you're just on a power trip. I'm like, dude, I just want you to get here. Just get here. We'll design it, we'll talk about it, just get here physically be present. And it's worse than any Californian I've dealt with because he's got a million and one excuses. A legitimately a million and one and he can come up with one any day. I was warned by two individuals that have been in business with him before not to do business with him. I felt like I've been the black sheep and the, the ugly duckling. Let's see. I had a bad experience with him originally where he wanted money for a job that was supposed to be sales profit. And then he was like, no, I just need to get paid on this. And I was like, okay. Cool, that wasn't the agreement, but things change. And he ghosted me for a few weeks, then came back and was like, yeah, I want that deal again. And so we tried to strike up a new deal. Very fair. Hey, let me put 
40 grand of my own money into something and all you got to do is be the labor force. You just gotta show up three days a week, five hours a day, 15 hours. Probably won't make any money to start with. Two weeks of training, you'll start making some money. Apparently he's done this with another person who put up the money and the ideas and he was always the, I'm gonna get it done, I'm gonna get it done, man, just never did. So he helped us with the expo by sitting there and talking to customers. In reality, he was supposed to be there for the whole week up to the expo, helping me make signs and woodworking. He made two signs, night one. From then on, he designed, complained, sanded a few things, but sat most of the time just complaining about what ifs and what haves. It was just one of those things where there was nothing I could do to try and motivate this man. Even money doesn't seem to motivate him because there was a job for 490 bucks. He goes out there, somehow gets hassled down to 400. For some reason, takes a cash payment instead of the software, the Square app that I logged him in, showed him how to write an invoice. Make sure you do this right. It's a new business, gotta be legal. Doesn't write an invoice, takes a cash payment, then refuses to give me the customer data. So I'm like, you know what? It's the first one. We're just trying to get this up and running and he, he just hasn't been here. I need to get it done. Otherwise, we lose the sale. Try and be done. For some reason, he refuses to give me the info for the customers. So now I'm immediately thinking, he probably charged more, paid me less. Then he comes back a few days later and says, well, she wants another eight board feet. Oh, well, now it was seven days later because I hadn't heard from him in a week. Kept giving me excuses why he couldn't come. And then it's over a week later and he says, oh, she wants another eight board feet. I think it was like four. But so for reference, she wants double the amount of walnut. Walnut is $18 a board foot right now. Red oak, which she wanted before with a pattern in the center, it was gonna be about 70% red oak and only 30% walnut. All of a sudden she wants 80% walnut and 20% red oak with a bunch more design, which is hilarious in its own right. And I told him, no, um, I'd like to talk to the customer. And why have you talk to the customer without even coming to the job and discussing the design. We had a design. The customer had given him a graph paper down to the measurements, the design, everything, and said, go for it. This is all allegedly on his word. And so I told him, Monday I'm grabbing the wood. This is last Monday, the Monday before Easter. I went and bought the wood. I told him I ordered it, bought it, 70 bucks for the red oak or 66 and some change after tax. And then the equivalent for the dark walnut was about 130, 140. <sighs> It's about 3x the cost, yeah. That was the measurements, everything we had. And then he contacts me about that new design and says, well, you shouldn't have cut anything. You didn't have a design. And I'm like, wait, I've been trying to get you out here, telling you, hey, we had a I'm done. I'm not doing this. I can't do this, man. It was the day that, uh, as you all had heard, there was a, a tax issue and I got hit with a lien for near 50% of my liquid income. It was, um, my liquid assets was gone. Nothing I can do, spoke to lawyers. And so, Funny enough, I tell him, man, I can't deal with this shit today. I got a million and one problems and I can't have you be one of them. He's like, you're on a fucking power trip. You're always doing this shit and I need to discuss 35, 40% ain't nothing. I want more if I'm gonna do the work. And I'm like, what work have you done? What work have you done except for bring termite infested boards that were in the middle of a broken down barn that you promised you had cedar, oak, walnut, all these things in Arkansas. He's the, uh, Hey, it's in storage guy. Any of you who know me, used to have a friend named Irving back in the day, everything was in storage. I got the brand new PlayStation, but it's in storage. He's that guy where everything is so grandiose and he can do so many things, but it's always in storage. It's just right, you know, like, oh, I could go get it, but something came up, that's that guy. So I saw the signs, that was my personal third strike with him, and I'm like, just not gonna respond, can't do it. And then he keeps pestering and saying, really, just, out-of-pocket things. I don't know what he thinks is gonna happen from this point, but since I'm the business owner and it's my money and my reputation on the line, I can wait for the customer to call me. They'll probably have a story from him and then I'm just gonna say, listen, do you want the text messages? Do you want the proof? Do you want the dates? Uh, I'll finish your project, I have the wood. Or if he picks up the wood and gets the okay from the customer, I again still have to talk to the customer, he can finish it where he wants. But the wood's cut down to the lengths from the original design which is so much fun because he changed the design and then said the customer would pay it, yet didn't give me an amount and also told me basically to fuck off. I'm good. I got so many other things going on. We're launching the Love Designs, relaunching Made by Love and we're doing fine. We'll make good use of all this. I can't rely on those toxic people. You shouldn't either. If you got toxicity, flush it out. All right, so Saturday morning, 15 till open and I had turned on the uh, the open sign. Three customers came in. Tablet, an iPhone 12 Pro Max, or 13 Pro Max, and then an iPhone, a 
an XR. These three screens will pay rent for two weeks, which is nice. I forgot because we weren't doing any business here. For the longest time, we weren't doing anything repair-wise because we didn't have any signs, any advertisements, our cards were very like, eh. Hence why we got 5,000 for free and then got another 5,000 for free, but yeah. It's funny because now we get at least three or four customers a day. So my decision to not go to Oklahoma City is based solely on that. the next day. Now I said there was something devastating that happened. Very devastating. We were planning on moving out. We got two houses that we really were like, yeah, this would be cheap enough to move. We can just get a U-Haul. It's much closer than coming from California. And then it turned out I had one more problem with the California State Franchise Tax Board. Had a problem when we moved here. They took five grand and it was gone. They sent me letters. I was trying to argue it was like 1500 bucks from last year. Turns out that there was a bill from 2013. I wasn't working that year. They say that I owed or they estimated that I owed almost $8,000. So with penalties and taxes and fees and interest, it got up to nearly $43,000. Mind you, I'm not the richest man in the room, you know? It's one of those things where I've just got a lot of liquid income. Hasn't been so great since leaving California because this store was slow and then my other store, they just kind of let it get slow. But my problem was, they didn't send a letter, not a request. I've been talking to them for months about the the five grand they took. They took $43,000 out of our savings. We only had 50K in our emergency, net emergency. So California state government just robbed me of $43,302.11. Yeah, like that. Not a letter, not a notice. Their claim says that they sent a letter to an address on file that was on file when I lived in California. Yet they have my forwarding address, just not apparently anymore because they cleared it off my account in January when they filed two days later the request and then last month sent the notice to my bank and it took them an extra two weeks so we were doing this we're getting ready to write a check for the franchise getting ready just to move my whole family down and then they take all of our savings make sure I have other money but it's just that was our little safety net taxes paid money there Nobody's going to take it. Nobody needs to touch it. They don't have to file a summons. They don't have to give you a letter. If they don't have your info, but they know that you have a bank, they can just take it. By law, they can just take it. So I've talked to four different lawyers now. They all tell me I can get roughly three to $5,000 back, but it'll take six months to a year. Possibly more if I want to take it to trial. Because I have a couple of recordings from when I was talking to the Franchise Tax Board. It is one hell of a time to be alive and live in California. Because even when you leave, you're never really done. They've officially stolen close to $60,000 from me in the last 90 days. And it nearly broke me. The stress alone was devastating. I was floored, literally, on the floor. I know that there's a lot of talk of banks collapsing and the world ending. I, I don't think the world's going to end. I think there's going to be a regime shift, not red or blue. It's going to be who can pick up the pieces from this broken economy that we have here in America. If it's another country that's gonna swoop in and pay our debts, pay our social security, do everything, I don't care who's in charge anymore. Anyone, even China, is better than the Biden administration. Never lost so much money or spent so much money into nothing than under Biden. So many new tactics, reserves, requests, penalties. Oh, well, we're trying to do this for you. You could potentially get this or that. Oh, let's give you some money, but it's really coming out of your taxes, so you owe it back. There's no relief. America is not the place for give me your hungry, your sick, your tired, your poor. It is get the f out of here. We're broke. We're desperate, and we have nothing else to give because America is me and you. We're the people. The people make America. Joe Biden isn't America. He is a figurehead upon a giant hand. And somebody's just playing with his bowels and getting random words out like some six-year-old's little play toy puppet and that's what he sounds like i loathe the fact that he says that he's running he hasn't announced it yet i don't care if it's left or right i just don't want stupid people in the office that's it i don't think that's too hard now somebody had mentioned that gavin newsom might run if that happens i'll leave the country i just can't I can't deal with two of the dumbest people that I've ever seen in office and what they've done through COVID and post and now the robberies they're committing. It's bad. And nobody wants to listen to it. Well, firsthand, I've been robbed by the Franchise Tax Board twice in the last 90 days. Once without notice, without demand, without anything. Not, a, not even a smooch. $43,000. Gone. Remember, that is already taxed money. Gone. Paid. 
legal. So imagine for all the people out there who aren't legal and still have money in the bank that are doing X, Y, and Z and nobody wants to know. They have eyes in the bank. You know how much you got and they made it so specific. So specific to where it's just enough to where I care to fight for it, but not really because I'm only going to get three to five grand back. It's so dumb. And then so long ago that there is no records. I kept tax for six years. It's nearly 10 and they came at me. Oh, I will see you next time. Just know we're making it through. We are marching on. Business is picking up. Motivation's picking up. Got a bit of a cold. But I'll see you yeah. next time. Life can be super happy. Life can be super sad. I'm trying super hard to separate the good and bad. I'll go back to my future just to get to my past. But knowing me, my DeLorean will probably